गुड इवनिंग is my voice audible students good evening Am I audible? Okay. Please ask your friends to join immediately. We can't waste too much time. Okay. So hope all of your uh, practice the programs in the model. So we have added some questions already. Uh, most of the people have tried. I got to know from the interns. Some some concepts I had not yet explained, but um, so you can explore them based on the hints given in the model, and you can try it out. So the thing is that uh, Python is a very big uh, platform. So you will get a lot of packages, a lot of uh, content over there. So it is practically impossible to cover, you know, uh, every kind of package is available in Python in uh, one semester or one year. So it is that huge. So we will be giving you idea about how how to go with it. So we will tell you what kind of questions are you no know, going to matter a lot, and based on that we will add questions in the model. And you can, if even though that that topic or that particular content uh, may not be explained in the class, based on the hints given you can attempt them. So all that you need to do is find the right package to implement that question and explore it. So that's why uh, I think uh, in all the classes, I've already informed uh, to the interns, your seniors that uh, try to divide every section into a group of 10, 11 people. I mean, 10 groups in a class. So that means uh, in every group, uh, uh, about six to five to six people will be there. So the advantage of working in a group is that you will be staying connected for entire four years. And as and when you go to the higher semester, uh, you will be working together. You have to do projects, right? So you will get that, uh, you know, uh, team building uh, kind of activities where you can get to know each other, share each other's uh, knowledge, ideas. Suppose if you have any doubts, you can discuss in a group, right? Instead of depending every time on the faculty to clarify the small doubts, right? So already we have been doing in some sections. So I told the interns to do it in all the sections, right? So please uh, develop that kind of uh, concept. Team building activity is very, very important, okay? Ultimately, you have to join a company and work in a team. So you have to keep aside all your, right? Uh, whatever the problems you might be facing with each other, apart from uh, outside college, right? So you have to keep your uh, ego, whatever fights if you had, 
you have to keep it aside and uh, work in a team right so that is most important apart from your regular knowledge what matters is how you cope up with the other people in the team right you might you might hate that person but you have to still work with them professionally so that is very important in companies so please develop that kind of professionalism work in a team you may hate that person but if that person comes to you for some doubt you have to work with him like a employee like a professional okay so uh, i have already informed the interns they will be you know creating the teams through the help of crs and dcrs suppose if you are not coming up with the team we will ourselves divide randomly into different teams so please make sure you are creating the team by yourself otherwise we will take care of them okay so i think uh, we can start the session so forget about whatever we have discussed in the last class uh, i think in the last class uh, i discussed about uh, how to install python in your in your computer uh, how to work with a command prompt python shell and how to uh, run multiple lines together right what is important in python right so i discussed about uh, uh, log basic variables and uh, importance of indentation right so what is indentation basically indentation is not just for you know uh, representation purpose indentation will help you to identify a block of code basically i missed that keyword in the last class so in python indentation is very important it's very mandatory without indentation you can't python cannot recognize whether it is a particular block or not so if uh, if you people don't know please write down that uh, definition indentation represents block of code in the python okay so i missed that uh, keyword block please write down that so anyway i'll be covering that uh, again through the examples so before that uh, i'm going to introduce you one more important platform uh, which i'll be using throughout our coming sessions so those who missed the last class need not to worry you think that this is your first class you you come with a fresh mindset uh, I will show you how to do that with the new new platform, right? If you if you already learned the previous platform, those who are interested, you can use that. But from now on, whenever it Python uh, comes into the picture, machine learning comes into the picture, you use this particular platform, like similar platforms. So I'll tell you what is the advantage, why we need to do this, all these things I will tell in the uh, coming sessions. Okay. So first and foremost thing is that you need to download Anaconda package. Okay, please write down, take a book, uh, basically installation point of view, please write down everything neatly. Okay, and please be alert in the class, uh, in between uh, in the coming sessions and today's session also, I'll be conducting, I'll be launching some poll questions, right? So, so that we can get to know who are active in the uh, session. So poll question I will launch anytime. So please be alert, please listen to the class based on whatever I teach maybe after some time i will launch the poll questions okay uh, so what is the platform i'm talking about is anaconda platform i've already typed in the screen so just confirm me that whether my screen is visible guys anyone please text in the text box okay fine so you can see that anaconda package uh, it is a platform to work with the python machine learning and data science okay so please type this anaconda uh, in your google click the first link very first link and you can see immediately you will see the download option so it is going to download 64 bit version into your machine suppose if you want to download uh, for other uh, like mac and all you have to do it separately got it So I have already downloaded it in my system. So you can see this. This is the package Anaconda Windows 64 bit. It's a very big file. It is almost 800 MB. Okay. So what you need to do is you have to install this Anaconda in your Windows machine. So I will just show you. I already installed it, but I will show you how to install it. Please follow it carefully. So double click on that. So you can see uh, the welcome page of Anaconda. 
click next so click the agree button i agree install for just me or all users you can install for all users that means whoever is using your uh, computer they can access the anaconda so then click next so it will ask for for you to confirm the installation click yes now you can see it is asking for the destination folder where you want to install the anaconda so by default it chooses some destination folder in the c drive that is program data anaconda 3 suppose you don't want to install in this particular location you can select any other folder in your computer so go to browse uh, pc suppose c d drive i want to install and say for example i want to install in this folder python okay so you can change the installation folder so where is my installation d drive python okay so now i already installed it i will show you where is my folder so my folder name which i have given here is anaconda files so i've created the folder already in that d drive so i'm selecting that drive okay then click next so already python is there so we have to choose another folder for example i will choose some document folder here so what is the folder i'm selected c users hp one drive documents click next okay not empty see the thing is that you need to remember is the folder that you are creating should be empty so what do you mean by that suppose i am trying to create a folder here anaconda installation so i have to create a fresh fresh folder and make sure that that folder is empty suppose if that folder is not empty you will get a error message got it So I will select uh, D drive, then Anaconda installation. This is a folder I created just now. Then click next button. So as you can see, after uh, selecting the package, it will ask you all these things: create, start menu, register Anaconda as system Python. So let it be as it is. Then you have to click install button. Got it? So this is the basic procedure to install the Anaconda. So what is required? Download the Anaconda from the official website. So from here, install it in a folder where the folder should be empty. So while installing, you see already it is selecting register Python for the Anaconda. That means, suppose if you have not yet installed any Python version, which I discussed in the last class, you need not to install it separately. So what does that mean is Anaconda comes with a pre-installed Python package, pre-installed Python package. So how to verify that I will show you. So see, I've already installed Anaconda in one of my drive called as Anaconda files. So I will open this. So after installation, you will see so many files like this. So these are all installed files of Anaconda. So how to check whether Python is there or not. So you can check here Python application it comes by default with the anaconda package right somebody has a doubt yeah please uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask me the doubt till now whatever i did any doubt till now Somebody raise the hand. Screen is not visible. Is it visible to all, all of you guys? Other guys? Is my screen visible? Okay. So I think uh, you need to check your network connection, Ashish. Not Ashish. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, you can watch it in YouTube also. I have uh, started live streaming there. If you were facing a network issue. So live streaming is available in YouTube also. You can check it out there. Okay. So I hope till now, how to install Anaconda is clear. Suppose if you don't know, 
just explore how to install Anaconda in Windows or Mac. It is a very simple process. Download the version, is a most recent version. Install it in a folder where the folder should be empty, right? So once the installation is success, how to verify whether it is installed or not, okay? So in your search button in Windows, you, check, you type Anaconda prompt. So in the last class, I told you command prompt, right? So you have to check whether this Anaconda prompt is coming or not. Got it? So search button, Anaconda prompt. So click on that. Sir, I have Python, do I need to click? No, no, if you have Python, you need not to uh, click that uh, register along with Python uh, checkbox. You have to unclick that. So that is a good question. So if you already installed the Python, no need to select the uh, that check button, okay? So that is important, uh, you need to remember that. Otherwise, you delete the Python, which you already installed, just installed Anaconda, everything will be added automatically, okay? So once you select Anaconda prompt, you will get this base C by default. But if you remember, where is my Anaconda installed? Can anyone tell me? Where did I install my Anaconda? Unmute yourself and uh, interact. So you can see I installed Anaconda in D drive. What is my folder name? Anaconda files. So obviously I have to switch to D drive. So how to switch to D drive from the Anaconda prompt? Type D colon, okay? So as you can see, I have switched to D drive. Now, I want to be in this Anaconda folders because whatever uh, programs I'm going to practice, I want to store them in this particular folder only. So double click this. Inside this, you'll see a lot of installed uh, folders and packages. But along with this, I've created one more folder manually. This is created by me. So you can give any name. Suppose if you want to uh, type practice programs, you can type that. So you have to create one more extra folder where you want to store all your programs. So I've created the name of the folder as programs inside Anaconda files. Okay. So now I have to switch to this particular programs folder from the command prompt. So what is the command I will type here is CD. What is my uh, first folder name? Anaconda files. Okay. Press enter. So now you can see we have uh, switched to Anaconda files folder. Then again, I want to store all the programs in this programs folder. So I'm typing once again, CD programs. Okay. So now we are in the exact folder where I want to store the programs. So what is CD command? Change directory. So if you don't know, please write down. CD is, indicates change directory. This is my main folder where I installed the Anaconda. This is the subfolder where I want to store all my programs. So here I have switched, I mean, from C drive, I shifted to this particular drive. Got it? So now, in the last class, as I told you, uh, that today I will be discussing about Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So you don't have laptop, no problem. So those who have laptop, please uh, follow it. Those who don't have laptop, you just work in a Moodle, right? And write down all the things, whatever I'm saying. So don't worry about uh, uh, the laptop. At least you know the procedure in future, right? Definitely when you go to the higher semester, you might get, get a laptop to do your project works and all. That time it will be helpful for you. So those who don't have laptop, no need to worry. You just need to focus and practice the program. So whatever we are going, going to give in Moodle, right? So in Moodle, you need not to do all this. All these things are taken care by Moodle internally. So the procedure that I'm telling is for those people who wants to do it themselves in the Jupyter notebook. Got it? So this is one time procedure. Uh, the content, everything I'll explain in Jupyter notebook. But your job is to just go and see the questions that I'm going to put in the Moodle, uh, execute them based on the topics that we are discussing. That's all. Okay. So now in the last class, I told you that uh, I will be talking about Jupyter Notebook today. So why I told you it is important? Because it comes with a lot of inbuilt packages that you need to work with the Python and machine learning. So if you're working with just a command prompt or Python shell, like idle, right? There you need to install every package separately one by one. So which is impossible. So as I told you, Python has like lakhs of packages in you know uh, existing. 
So based on your requirement, you need to install packages, which is going to be a very hectic process. So Anaconda makes that task simple for us. It, has, it comes with a lot of packages that we need to work with our projects in build. So we need not to install them separately. So that's why Anaconda is one of the best platform, best package to work with the Python and machine learning. Okay, so I'll tell you what are those packages, why we need that on down uh, once I complete this installation procedure. Got it? So now, uh, what you need to do is, I am in this pro folder programs, you have to type Jupyter Notebook. So please write down this command, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so this is the place where we are going to type all the programs, execute, no, learn the Python basically. So it is one stop solution to store everything that we are doing at one place. Got it? It is like our uh, drive, Google Drive or Google Classroom. So any program that you are practicing, you can store all of them at one place. So in command prompt, what is the problem? You have to save every file separately. Right? For example, if you type some, uh, some program based on uh, operators, that should be stored separately. Some program based on loops that should be stored separately so you will be creating a lot of uh, unnecessary files so instead if you create jupyter notebook one no one place where you can type all the programs and still open it anytime that you want to uh, you know see and uh, you know, revise it will be very easy for you guys okay so jupyter notebook type jupyter notebook press enter button so wait for some second so as you can see, as soon as I typed Jupyter Notebook, something has happened here in the command prompt. Immediately, browser has opened. So you can see that browser has opened. Uh, basically, the Jupyter Notebook runs in the browser. Please write down. Jupyter Notebook runs in the browser. So how does it run? It won't run it directly, just like Moodle. Suppose in Moodle, if I give you the URL, website name, you can type it and learn, execute the programs. But in Jupyter Notebook, you have to follow this procedure. What is the procedure? You have to first switch to the folder where you install the Anaconda, then create some subfolder to store the programs. Then once you are in that folder, type the command called as Jupyter Notebook. Got it? So once you type the Jupyter Notebook, it will launch a web browser, right? So this is a web browser name. And please write down, you can't open this browser without typing this Jupyter Notebook or without being this window active. That means you can't close this window. Suppose if you close this window, you can't do anything here. It is just like, you know, inactive. It doesn't have any effect. So it will be there, but it, it can't do, it can't execute any program. Got it? So please uh, write down, when you run Jupyter Notebook, this black window should be always open. So that means how to keep it open, just minimize it. Just minimize it, okay? Suppose I'll show you. Now you want to close the window. That means uh, you have you have practiced some programs. You want to exit the notebook. So what you need to do is you have to press the Control C. So you can see here it is highlighted. Use Control C to stop the server and shut down all kernels. That means if I press Control C, this particular window will be inactive. So I have to verify that. You can just follow. So I'm pressing Control C. So you can say I came back to the folder. So what it is uh, displaying, shutting down the kernel, interrupted, shutting down the kernel. Now you can refresh this uh, website. So what it is showing, this site can't be reached. That means it is inactive. Now again, I will type the Jupyter Notebook. Press Enter. So you can see that it has reappeared, right? So you can refresh, it will launch back. So I hope all of you understood what is important to run the Jupyter Notebook. You have to go to the Anaconda files where your Anaconda is installed, subfolder where all the programs are there, then type the Jupyter Notebook command. Once you type this command, this, this particular browser window will open and it will be active. So this has to be open till the time you practice the programs, right? So you can't close this. If you close this, this becomes invalid. So you can minimize it and keep it as it is. Now you see already I've created some fold, some uh, you know, files here. 
So these are called as Jupyter Notebook files. So the extension of Jupyter Notebook files is IPYNB. Okay, IPYNB. So generally the Python programs are stored with the extension .pi, right? But the Jupyter Notebook files are by default IPYNB. So what is IPYNB? It is used for computational notebooks that can be open with Jupyter Notebook. So you have to know what is this extension is. So basically it is not a Python file, but it is a notebook file where all Python programs are there. So that clarity you need to have. If somebody asks whether .ipynb is same as .py, so the answer is no. .ipynb file is used to open the uh, Python programs in Jupyter Notebook, but it is not a Python program. Got it? Basically it is a combination of all Python programs. Got it? So IPYNB in, in small example, if I want to say IP1, IPYNB is like a JNTU. Within JNTU, you have a number of colleges, right? So JNTU is like a Jupyter notebook. Under JNTU, there are a lot of colleges who are working. So as simple as that. Got it? So now you can so you can go and check in, in that folder where I created that folder programs. So the same files are visible here also, got it? So wherever you selected the folder, so this is the folder where I created the files. So it is visible here also and in the same folder where I uh, selected programs, Anaconda files programs. So this is important, got it? YouTube stream details, okay. Okay, so if you are facing network issue, you can just follow it up in the YouTube. Got it? Yeah. So I hope uh, till now, any doubt? I'll, I'll just take uh, one or two queries for two minutes. Till now, how to launch? What you learned till now? How to install Anaconda? How to run it and what are the rules right so any doubt in installation till now yeah so you can yes dheeraj tell me dheeraj How to download Anaconda? Nothing. Just uh, type Anaconda in your Google. So once you type Anaconda, the very first link that you are getting, Anaconda, then download button. Okay. So here you can select the version that you want. So it is a huge file. You need to be very, network connection should be proper. Uh, Anaconda is not alternative to Python. Anaconda is a total environment to work with Python and its supported packages. So it is a platform. Okay, it is not alternative. It it uh, basically provides you all the necessary packages that you require to work with the Python in build. Got it? What are the packages? So uh, so basically, what you are asking is, sir, can you measure how big the sky is? Sai Saket, got it? So basically, uh, today I will be discussing one or two packages, but uh, this question is very interesting. So if you want me to answer this question, I don't have the answer. Basically, there are lacks of packages in the Python. That's why Python is very 
right it is going to rule the next 10 years as i'm telling it has a lot of packages which are you know, uh, no, keep updating every day so your data science your ai tools basically all these are uh, based on all these new packages that people are uh, adding every time to the, uh, the to the python uh, packages got it so how to explore these packages based on your requirement all those uh, guide uh, uh, the tricks i will tell you so right now you need not to worry what are the packages but as and when i am going to cover the topics i will uh, tell you what are the important packages that you need to install extra if it is required sir in anaconda prompt if i type d it is not recognizing so you have to type d colon okay not just d d colon so please follow it when i whenever i am explaining on that moment only you write down the commands okay so d colon not just d should be you install python no no you need not to install what is that i told you while installing anaconda by default it will uh, there will be a square box like this which will be ticked so the message will be registered register python along with anaconda some some message will be there suppose if you had already installed uh, python you just unclick this one no need to uh, install that once again okay no need to install also So hope uh, you got some idea. So those who are writing it, please write down so that you can just you know, communicate that information later to everyone. How to open the Jupyter Notebook? Yeah. So just you have to log into the folder where you want to type the programs. Suppose, see, if you don't have, a, you have not yet created this programs. So once again, I will open Anaconda prompt. This is a separate window. Suppose if I type Jupyter Notebook here, see it is also opening one more window, but the location is different. So what is the location? The location is C users HP. That means you go to C users HP. So here in this folder, the Anaconda is creating the file. See, what is the name here? Untitled IPYNB, right? So you need not to mention the drive, but what is the advantage? If you mention the drive, all your works will be at one place. See, I have worked with four models. All of them I can access at any time. You got it? So that is the importance. So you have to switch to that folder where you are working. Got it? So I can terminate this particular server. So you can run as many windows as you want, but you should be very careful where your files are getting stored. So I will close this. Uh, what you are writing, I am not getting. What is not recognized as command? Satvik. So please mention your problem properly. Okay. So anyway, don't worry. Uh, if anyone wants to install Anaconda in their laptops, get your laptops to college, right? So if time permits, uh, uh, any one particular lab session, I will come uh, individually, I will tell you the procedure. So until you do it, you won't understand, okay? So right now, those who don't have laptop, those who don't know, not getting how to install all this process, no need to panic. All that you need to do is, log into the model go to the python programming course practice the programs that's all is more that is more important right so why i'm telling all this is once you know this procedure you can work for next four years without any problem whether it is data science whether it is machine learning whether it is python 
So that's why I'm introducing this Anaconda. At least you get to know these terminologies, you get to know this uh, IDLs, right? Basically, platforms or tools where you need to type the Python programs. Got it? So those who understand, they can communicate this information to others later on. Right? Suppose if you don't want to do all this, best thing is use some online compiler, time being. Anyway, we're not going to touch upon advanced topics like machine learning topics and all. So this is a core Python. Core Python means the fund foundation. So for foundation, any online compiler is more than enough. Got it? I think D is for, yeah. Suppose if you have, uh, see, suppose if you don't have any other drive, if you have only single drive, all you need to do is you have to select same drive, create one folder here. For example, Anaconda files, you can create here and install there. I'm just telling you the installation folder can be anything, not the one which the Anaconda is installing, correct? By default, whatever it is installing, you can keep it, but you have to remember where the files are getting stored. Got it? Anyway, so let us uh, work with the Jupyter Notebook now. See, my server is already running. So, th so how to create the file? First thing that you need to understand. So this is a home page of the Jupyter Notebook. So here you can see on the rightmost corner, new. You have to click that new, new button, and you have to select Python 3. So please write down Python 3, okay? New Python 3. So once you click that, another window, new tab will open in the browser. Can you see here? It has created one more new page. The page name is untitled. You get a lot of options here. I will explain all of them one by one. So this is the notebook place where you are going to type the programs. So if you want to change the notebook name, you can click here and you can enter the name. So this is new or simple name I'll give. Practice notebook. Rename. So you can check that the name of the notebook has been changed. Now I'll go and verify whether it is created in my folder. So my folder is D, Anaconda files, programs. Can you see here? The name is updated here also. So that is important. So wherever you are typing, you should know the location of that particular file. Got it? So practice notebook is the place where I, uh, I mean, the practice notebook is the file which is stored in this particular folder, programs folder. Got it? So this is how you, you need to create the new file, Python file, Python notebook file. Got it? But I will close this. I already have, I'm already having so many files which I already uh, made it ready so that we can cover a lot of topics in less time. So I don't want to type everything one by one. Uh, I, I'm just going to go a little bit uh, you know, quick in terms of uh, basic syntaxes and all. So I made all these models ready. So already these models I've created. So you can open that file existing module. So I'm opening this file. Okay. So this is my first module uh, about uh, Jupyter Notebook and all its fundamental rules and all. Uh, so a lot of content I have here. So one by one, we'll discuss. Okay. So by meanwhile, I'll open this also on the next page, next tab, uh, so that you can understand the uh, commands and all. Right. So what I'm going to discuss now is the fundamentals of YouTube link. Uh, you can find it in the login only. You can check it out. There will be a live button. You can just click on that. Uh, it will launch. Okay, so you can write down some of the important commands or the shortcuts that we are going to use with the Jupyter Notebook. So you can see why the name is Notebook. Because it is not only executing the programs, it is creating the material for us. Yes or no? So you can add editing, you can add images, right? You can use multiple cells, right? You can run n number of code in the same file. Then once I type all the programs or practice all the programs, I can generate a PDF file like this. 
So you can download your work and store it safely. For example, file download as PDF via HTML. So it is generating the file here. So you can see core Python file it is generating. So I will open this file after downloading. You can see it is generating the PDF file for me automatically. So whatever program you practice, you can convert that into PDF file and you can practice or refer it later on. So that is the advantage of using Anaconda. So this is which is not possible in case of uh, command prompt. Got it? So what are the rules? What are the some of the important shortcuts in Jupyter Notebook? I am going to tell now. So please uh, listen carefully. Or if, if you want, you can take us two minutes break and you can ask me any doubts in that time. Okay, before I start. So please write down this heading, Jupyter Fundamentals. And what are the, some of the important keywords or shortcuts that we are going to use uh, while working with the Jupyter Notebook. So same kind of features will be available in all, all other uh, IDEs. Some people are using visual code. So they might be having uh, knowledge in that particular ID. So it doesn't matter which ID you are using. You should know in and out of that. That's as simple as that. Got it. So you need not to refer Jupyter Notebook only. There are a lot of other uh, platforms to work with Python. But uh, for me, this is more comfortable. So I'm going to tell you about this. So if anyone is having expertise in visual code, you can follow that, not an issue. OK. So these are all called as cells, OK? So I will open this uh, this new notebook. So initially, you will have this particular window. You can see this box. These are called as cells, OK? Remember the terminologies, cell. So you can see some color here. What is this color? Green color, OK? So what is green color indicates is when you are in the green color, it is in the edit mode or typing mode. So please write down all these things. When you are in green color, you are in edit mode. And uh, what is the symbol that we are using to represent the comment line? Hash. The hash is used to uh, represent the single line comment and triple quotes that is used to represent the multiple comment line. Okay. So blue color indicates what? Indicates we are in edit mode. Okay. So this is a comment line which is not going to execute. Suppose if you want to create multiple line comment, you have to type triple quotes, three triple quotes, uh, double quotes at the same time. Three times, double quotes, three times. Okay, see here, I'll repeat. So automatically it will add another three double quotes. So red color, Sorry, not red, blue color. Blue color cell indicates we are in command mode. Okay. So, can anyone tell me uh, now in which mode we are in by seeing the color? Are we in command mode or are we in uh, edit mode? So you can unmute and you can, yeah, so edit mode. So if you want to come back to the command mode, so when you click inside the cell, you are into edit mode. When you press escape button, so you have to press escape button. Press escape button to come out of edit mode. Okay, so now I'm pressing escape button. So when I press escape button, you can see that color is changed. Now it is showing blue color, so which means we are in command mode. Okay. So most of the shortcuts work only with the command mode. Please remember that. So when you are in edit mode, some commands, some shortcuts won't work. So most of the shortcuts will work only in command mode. That means you have to press escape button, shift from edit mode to the command mode. Got it? So this is a comment line. So this is a single line comment. This is a multiple line comment. Suppose if you don't like double quotes, you can also use single quotes, not an issue. Three times single quotes. So Python is a very flexible programming language. It has a lot of alternatives. 
So single line comments are indicated with this. I don't know what is this color. I think I have a color blinding problem. So somebody tell me what is this color. I think it's light blue or something. Okay. So red color content indicates comment line, but it is a multi-line comment. This is a single line comment. This is multi-line comment. Okay. So these are not going to be executed when you run the program. Now I'll write a sample program. A equal to 5. B equal to 6. Print A plus B. Okay. So now I type the program. Okay. So next question is what? Obviously, what is important as soon as you type a program, what is the next thing? You have to execute the code, right? So to execute the code, there are again a lot of shortcuts, short keys, keyboard shortcuts. So what you need to press is control enter. So please write down. So what is the command I need to press? Control plus enter button. So when you press control plus enter button, you can see the output here. So A value is 5, B value is 6, A plus B, it is displaying the output. So you can see the output immediately in the uh, below cell. Got it? So what is the shortcut key to execute the Python programs in Jupyter Notebook? Control plus enter. Please write down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you one by one how to do all this. What is command mode? Yes. So command mode is basically to execute the program. You have to shift to the command mode. To type the program, you have to go to the edit mode. Got it? So to alter alter the cell position, to apply some of the shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts, you should be always in command mode. Okay. So that is by default. Only to type the program, you have to be in edit mode. Got it? Now, when I press control plus enter, it is executing. So you can see this uh, in the bracket, the value number is changing here. The number, as many times I execute the program, that many times it will update. So I press the execution button that is control plus enter 10 times. So it is updating. Okay. So this value indicates how many times you executed the program. There is one more alternative to execute the program that is shift plus enter. Okay. So just observe what is happening when I press shift plus enter. See, to, to press this button, you can be in any mode. You can be in edit mode or you can be in command mode. Doesn't matter. So these two commands will work in both the modes. Okay. Suppose see, I am in the edit mode. I'll press shift plus enter. Can anyone tell me what happened when I press shift plus enter? new cell very good so that is the only difference control plus enter will execute and be in the same cell whereas shift plus enter will execute the program and move to the new cell so it has come to the new cell got it shift plus enter suppose i'll delete this so you can select this cell first from your cursor then you can delete from this particular you know knife this symbol is there now so you can click on that so that cell will be deleted See, again, I'm showing shift enter. I'm pressing. You can see the new cell is created. That's the only difference. That means you want to type the new program in the new cell. You can update and go to the new cell. So this, this particular job is done. So this is my first program. You can think like that. So now I, whatever I want to do, I can do it in the new cell. Got it. So like this, I'll be telling you a lot of uh, shortcuts in the Jupyter notebook so that it will be, it will be very interesting for you guys to work so that you, so that you need not to go every time use your mouse, right? So if you know the shortcuts, you are 99% of the time you'll be using keyboard shortcuts only. Okay. So like this, I've listed down all the all the different type of uh, uh, Jupyter uh, notebook shortcut keys here. So I'll discuss one by one. So let us read one by one. So as I told you, blue color cell indicates in command mode, green color cell indicates you are in edit mode. So first, if you want to shift from edit mode to command mode, you have to press escape button. To execute cell, you have to press control enter. Shift plus enter also will execute, but it moves to the new cell. So somebody asked me how to see the line numbers, right? So to see the line numbers, what you have to press? Press L. So in which mode is very important? Press L in command mode, right? You have to press that L in command mode. So you see already I'm having the line numbers here. 
Suppose I don't want to see the line numbers. First thing that you need to do is make sure you are in command mode. So blue color indicates command mode. I'll press L. Either small L or capital, it doesn't matter. L. See, when I'm pressing L, the line numbers are removed. Again, I'll press L, the line numbers reappear. Select. You have to be in this cell. Press L. Again, repress the L. So if you want to see the line numbers, you can see them. If you want to hide, you can hide them. Not an issue. Got it? Then there is one more. Suppose the output is already displayed here. Now I don't want to see the output. You can hide the output. You can hide the output by double clicking in the left column of the output. That means, uh, please uh, note down carefully. So where you need to select to hide this uh, hello world, you have to select on the left side of this hello world. That means here. So here, if I double click, you can see that the output is hidden. Again, if you want to reappear that uh, output, double click there. Double click to see the output, double click to hide the output, very simple. Okay. So now the output is there. Similarly, suppose uh, I, I don't want to see the output at all. I want to clear the output completely. So what is the command to clear cell output? What is the command? Control O, Control O, small or capital O doesn't matter. So again, you have to be in command mode only. So I'm pressing Control O. What happened? The output is removed totally. Again, if I double click here, nothing will work because it is cleared. It is deleted. Now, how to execute and get the content back, the output back? Again, press the Control Enter. So I'm pressing Control Enter. The output has reappeared. You can hide it. So to clear the output, Control O. Got it? So Control O will clear the output. All these things will work in the command mode only. Please be very careful. Suppose there is one more thing. Uh, Jupyter Notebook will allow you to customize your shortcut keys also. You can go to help section, edit keyboard shortcut is there. You can edit your shortcut keys. Suppose I like V. I am a big fan of Virat Kohli. I want V as the shortcut key. So to execute the program, you can give control plus V instead of enter. So all these things you can customize. Okay. So customization of the shortcut keys are also possible in the Jupyter Notebook. But I don't want you to do all that. Just uh, follow the existing things more than enough. Okay. Then, so I've customized uh, one particular key uh, to clear all cell output. That is Control I. Okay. How to get back? Yes, yes. So please wait. I'm going to tell one by one. So all the shortcut keys, what are all these things I will tell you. How to move to the previous cell, new cell, uh, how to delete, undelete, all those things we will discuss one by one. So this I have customized already. I've given control I to clear all cell output. All cell output means I've executed so many programs here. I don't want to see the output of any program. Okay. So what you have to do? Control I. So I'll press uh, control I. Just I'm showing you for your information. This is the output. This is the output. All these are output. Now I don't want to see any program output. So I'm pressing control I. So just see in no cell, the output is appearing. That means at a time you are clearing the output of all programs. Got it? So all these things are possible in the, the Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So moving on to the next uh, set of commands which are most useful like some people are al already asking so please uh, write down all these things some useful keyboard shortcuts in jupyter notebook okay now see the already some cells i've added here suppose this is one program now what i want to do is above this cell i want to add a new cell okay above this cell i want to add a new cell and uh, continue from there so what you need to do is again, click on that particular cell. Make sure you are in command mode. What is the keyword? What is the command? A, A means keyword, uh, the alphabet A. A command will add a cell above the current cell. B command will add a cell below the current cell. Okay. So that means if you are in, in simple terms, if you are in third block or third floor, if you press A, if you press A, we will go to the previous block, that is second block. 
second floor if you press b you will get to the you will go to the fourth floor as simple as that so a will add the new cell below before the current cell b will add the new cell after the current cell similarly if you want to delete any cell right you can use dd dd at a time you have to press dd uh, consecutively simultaneously you have to press dd suppose if you want to undo cell deletion suppose you have deleted some cell by mistake you want to undo so you can press z button so all these things will be very useful so that's why i meant uh, no, mentioned here all commands all above mentioned commands will only work in command mode so that is the importance of command mode if you're trying all these commands in edit mode none of them will work so please, please be careful you should not be in edit mode to apply all these commands or shortcut keys got it so now i want to add a new cell above this so what i need to press someone tell me about this cell i want to add a new cell please post your doubts yes so you have to press a so i am pressing a so you can see the new cell is added here now again i'll come back to this cell now i want to add a new cell below this cell what i should press b see i pressed b new cell is added here got it suppose you don't want to do all these things press control z or you can press double d select that cell press double d that uh, cell will be deleted select uh, select that particular cell press double d at a time that cell will be deleted so i want all these uh, shortcuts you have to try got it again to create headings uh, there is a very interesting procedure suppose i want to mention uh, something some information before i type the program for example i want to say that uh, this is this is the python program related to function so i want to mention some information related to that so first thing that you need to do is you have to go to code select markdown okay markdown means it will be acting as a heading it won't compile and execute then you have to press hash okay so markdown so press hash so one hash if you use it will be very big uh, letter suppose this program indicates about functions you have to press shift enter shift enter so you can see it has been recognized as a heading not a program suppose you want to update the size of this particular uh, content you should use as many hashes as you want so jupyter supports up to five hashes the more the number of hashes the lesser the size of the heading will be so in, suppose if you don't want to press hash what you need to do is you have to be in the markdown press one so one indicates the bigger letter press two little bit smaller three four five this is sample program shift enter so you can see that the size is little bit reduced compared to the first one so this is called as markdown right markdown means it is acting like a heading so that is the, uh, that information also i have written here so you people can try now by mistake now i want to convert this uh, particular cell to markdown mode so now you see it is in the code mode please make sure that any cell you are executing it has to be in the code mode suppose you don't want to use all control keys you can press the run button here also it is available here okay so if you want to change the cell to the markdown mode there is a shortcut key you can just be in the command mode press m see when you press m it is going to the markdown mode now i want to come back to the uh, code mode press y see when i press m this thing is re uh, removing right this uh, disappearing this in brackets are disappearing when i press m when i press y it is reappearing so these are the shortcut keys m will go to the markdown mode y will come back to the code mode okay so all these are very useful features of jupyter notebook got it so now yeah so let's see so where you have doubt ganesh which one you have doubt please unmute yourself and uh, ask me the doubt Which part you want me to explain, Ganesh? 
Yes. YouTube link. Okay. Shortcut code for code mode is Y. Y. Just Y. Not control Y or shift Y. Just Y. M will go to the markdown mode. Y will come back to the code mode. So you need not to combine with the control or shift. Just Y. See all these things you can explore in the help section or you can click here, open the, see here you see all the shortcut keys. Suppose if you don't remember later on, you can check it out. So how to delete cells, as I told you, you have to be in a command mode and press DD, right? Enter edit mode, right? So all these uh, shortcut keys you can find here by pressing this keyboard symbol here, over here. Okay. Any other doubt? Can we move on? Okay. So let us uh, just check your knowledge till now, whatever you have done. I'm going to start a poll. So please be active. So I'm launching a poll. Just answer uh, some of the basic questions I've given here. Play along with the Python. So please be ready. So today I've given only five questions, but uh, in the coming sessions, I will add, uh, you know, very nice, uh, fun, fun questions related to whatever topics we are going to discuss. So we'll make it more engaging. Okay. So I'm launching the poll questions. So all of you just be ready and answer it. Okay. So just answer, are you able to see the poll questions? So I'll keep it active for uh, a max of three minutes, not more than that, because there are just five questions. So I'll hide this. Mm, if I click new, it is getting Uh, Rohit, you need to tell me where, where you are creating the folder. Okay. Chinmay, what you are getting? What is the problem you are facing? Please don't post any answers, okay? So just try honestly. Or else I have to hide the chat box. How to launch Jupyter Notebook, sir? Just you have to, first thing that you need to do is type Anaconda prompt in your Windows search box. You will get, see, suppose if you have successfully installed Anaconda, you will see this particular command prompt, anaconda prompt. So you have to open that anaconda prompt and type Jupyter Notebook. So my installation is there in D drive. The folder name is anaconda files. Uh, and this folder indicates where my actual programs are. This is anaconda files. This is actual programs. Here you need to type Jupyter Notebook command. Once you type this, it will open the Jupyter Notebook in browser, whichever default browser you have. If you suppose Chrome is your default browser, it will open this particular home page. This page it will open. And here you have to select new Python 3. Python 3. And here you need to type all your files. Okay, last... Uh, 15 seconds. Last 15 seconds. I will end the poll.
Anaconda prompt you want to see? Okay. So anything that you update there, it will appear here also. See, I open a lot of files now. So it will automatically keep saving. When you press Control S, it will keep saving. So please make sure you are pressing Control S to save the notebook. Suppose if you type two programs also, immediately press the Control S. But the uh, advantage is that it will auto save. That means even if you forget, the Jupyter notebook will auto save the files that you are typing. That is the beauty of that. So so that you don't miss out on any code that you have typed. Okay. So yeah, I think we can end the poll. So you can check your uh, results. So just basic questions I have given here so that you just create interest. So obviously you know that what is the extension out of the Python file is .py. So you see some people, they don't know the basics. So that's why you should be very careful. So most of you have answered it. This is an interesting question that I've given. In which language Python is written, right? So most of you have answered, but some of you think that it is PHP. So the correct answer is C, okay? The correct answer is C. So Python is written in C language. So you can ask sir how it is possible. So that's what, uh, when, I, when I started C language, I always tell C is the mother of all languages, right? So some people think why C sir, we have advanced uh, languages. So C is the foundation for all the languages. We have just kept upgrading them. Right, we just use the basic foundation of C and kept simplifying that C into the new versions. Got it? So whether it is Java, whether it is C plus plus, whether it is C hash, so C is the mother of all those languages. It is like your, you know, ancestor. C is like your ancestor. So basically, all the C code has been used to create Python packages to simplify that. So please remember this question. Very important question. Uh, this this is an interesting question. I have not yet told you, but I add it so that I can check whether if you have practiced or explored yourself. So generally, you know that in uh, C language, all the keywords are in small case letters. Suppose if I declare a variable, if I declare a function, if I use main, main, int main, right, hash include, all these things are in small case, right? But in the case of Python, what is the correct answer is none of the above. The correct answer is none of the above. Right. So some some keywords are in lowercase, some keywords are in uppercase. In some keywords are capitalized. So the answer is none of the above. You can you can't say all of them are lowercase or all of them are uppercase. So some of them are in capitalized version also. Okay. So the right answer is none of the above. So which of the character is used to give single line comments? So the correct answer is hash. So most of you have given the right answer. Which of the following is used to define a block of code in the Python language, right? So uh, in the beginning only I told you, so indentation will indicate the block of code. Some people have given brackets. So I think they are still in the uh, C mode. So please come back to the Python mode whenever I'm teaching Python. So brackets are not needed in Python at all. So you will, as and when you, uh, when you see the programs, never you will find the brackets in Python. So please remove that from your head, okay? Python will not use any brackets key some people have given so maybe yeah so the correct answer is indentation so all these things are uh, some of the basic questions like this i'll be adding some coding questions also in coming classes so please practice more and more questions right please please utilize this don't think that is okay it is a value added course let me learn it later right so don't have that kind of mindset so it just yesterday, just yesterday only I come up with one sentence in some Canada quote, Canada language, some some actor. So that I converted into English and I wanted to tell you guys, right? So the basically I use that in my code also. If possible, I will show you. Yeah. So please think this and uh, work every day. What is this quote saying? You can't do everything in one day, but one day you can do everything. So that one day will not just come just like that. You have to work hard for it, for that every day, right? 
so some people will think how to do all these things how to so only practice makes not only man everyone perfect so please make sure you are practicing don't just uh, listen and leave if you start now by the time you come to the final year you will have will get a lot of confidence because you might have solved so many problems right okay so you can't do everything in one day but one day you can do everything correct so in, uh, when you start talking suppose uh, learning something you might spend half an hour for that but as and when you keep doing that every day instead of half an hour you can learn that uh, within 5 minutes 10 minutes that's how you can learn so many things uh, in one day that's what it means basically so for that it, it doesn't happen in just just like that it it, re it requires continuous effort continuous practice got it so hope you people are uh, understanding whatever i'm saying okay so all these things are uh, some of the important key, keyword keyboard shortcuts in jupyter notebook so now the next question is why jupyter notebook over python shell correct why jupyter notebook over python shell so as i told you somebody asked me sir what are the packages in python so the practically my answer is infinite i can't count and tell you exactly so there are n number of packages in python okay so if somebody asks you also you tell that it is uncountable basically you can't count them exactly but the advantage of jupyter notebook is it, it comes with some of the inbuilt packages okay so this is a simple code i have written just to show you the importance of um, jupyter notebook over python shell so if i execute this code so just see what is happening when i have executed that code this is the output of this particular code it is drawing some graph it is drawing some you know, perpendicular line and it is doing some x-axis y-axis based on the values i've supplied here okay so to do all this it is not possible in the python shell you can do it but you need to install all these library files separately so what is who is doing this job matplotlib import matplotlib okay dot py plot as p basically i'm importing this particular existing library file which is already available in anaconda as p as p means this entire thing is renamed as just p why because i don't want to name that as it is every time it is just like this you, de you declare a constant in c you know, hash defined pi 3.14 so instead of using 3.14 every time you use pi as the name right similarly instead of using matplotlib.py plot as a name i'm using p as the name then this is one more important library file package which we need to use to do you know a lot of calculations that is called as numpy again i'm importing numpy as np you can give any name this is a user defined name p is a user defined name then i am creating an array 0 to 3 and making it as x variable then y np dot array 0 to 25 then i'm plotting the graph see the this is an inbuilt function p dot plot x comma y p dot show to uh, see the output so these are the important library files like this there are hundreds of library files okay so this will generate a simple graph right with the uh, access so like this you can do a lot of analysis you can use the existing files so how to check whether some library files are there or something is missing how to install is the next question correct yeah so to create any file in general i'm getting permission denied okay uh, rohit uh, you meet me tomorrow okay so i think you have messed up somewhere while installing uh, definitely uh, it, it, i will solve your problem so get your laptop and uh, show me where you went wrong huh? will graph will come on online gdb sir uh, that i'm not sure i don't think graph will come that's why i'm telling if you want to work with the this kind of graphical applications uh, import some csv file do some analysis uh, some online compiler may not support. So best thing is install in your local system, work with that. Got it? So you just check it out, this code, you type it in online GDB and check if it is uh, able to draw the graph, uh, then no problem. So what I'm trying to say is some packages will be there, some packages will not be there. So the advantage of Anaconda is 99% of the packages are covered here. Only some new packages uh, you can install later on. Got it? So that is the importance of Anaconda. So this package will be helpful for you to learn in machine learning also, data science also. Okay. Got it. So suppose you uh, you want to hide this. What do you need to do? 
can anyone tell me how to hide this output i don't want to see this output because it is uh, taking a lot of scrolling time how to hide this output i told you what is the shortcut key to hide the output or control i control i will hide all the pro, all the cell output control o double click on the left side so someone answered yeah dheeraj double click on the left side yes so here you need to double click double click here so you can see the uh, output is hidden again double click output will reappear okay so this is the importance of uh, jupyter notebook so it provides all these features okay next so so you hope you understood what i was talking how to install the new packages right suppose you you are missing some package so you just type anaconda packages somebody asked me right what are the packages anaconda packages to install anaconda package list you can go to this see here second link anaconda package list then based on your version you click here so python 3.10 64 bit version minus 64 bit window so i'm going to this one can you see how many packages are there so i don't know uh, almost so you have to keep on scrolling down got it so many packages so all these packages obviously you can't remember you can't uh, you know by heart so you will only use them based on your requirement for example some of the package i want to install correct so say for example there is an important package uh, which will convert our file to pdf so that i have already installed but i will show you mm, we will search it okay anyway numpy is there now So you can see what is a numpy it is a package for array processing of numbers strings records and objects right so it will help you to process large number of records basically suppose a big excel file you want to process so numpy will help you to do that so how to install this numpy okay so go to anaconda prompt so you need not to close the existing server you just have to start the new window so you need not to switch to the folder where you install the anaconda you can be in the in this particular folder only no issue so what is the folder i have? i mean c users hp to install the package i'm telling so you need not to go to the uh, where your files are stored okay so that means you need not to shift to the d drive so how to install the new package so there are some commands you need to remember conda install numpy so type this conda install numpy press enter So it will start processing. You can you have to wait for some time. Yeah, so you can see that uh, it is started collecting the package data. So it will take some five minutes based on how huge that package is, right? Suppose if the package is already existing, it will say that uh, the package is already installed. Like this, you can install the new packages also. So meanwhile, I'll show you where these packages are installed. So all of you know that my drive is Anaconda files and uh, see this is my drive where I install the Anaconda. In this particular drive, you can see this folder. What is a folder? PKGS. PKGS means packages. So click this. See already Anaconda comes with lot of lot of inbuilt packages. So I'm keep on scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Can you see how many packages it has already installed? So imagine a situation that you are working with a command prompt with a idle shell. How many packages you need to install one by one based on the requirement. So it is practically very inconvenient and it is not uh, flexible also, right? So that is a advantage of using Anaconda. So these are all inbuilt packages which already installed during your installation. That's why that uh, installation size is also very big. It is almost 600, 700 MB, okay? These are inbuilt packages. Let me see whether it is installed or not. So yeah, so what it what happened? So when I typed conda install numpy, 
see it is already selecting environment location package plan it is detecting where my anaconda files are it is shifting to this d drive and it is asking me to update some packages need to be updated from that numpy so this new packages will be installed so it is asking proceed you need to press y or n y means yes n means no so click yes so you can see it is downloading and extracting new packages got it so once you come back to the that uh, previous prompt that means your package is already installed got it so this is how you can install the new uh, packages in your anaconda for example this open cv is there there is one more command you can use not only conda suppose sometimes some package won't support through the conda library for that there is one more uh, keyword pip pip install open cv okay so please write down this also so pip okay so this particular package is not supported so then you can install using conda So what is PIP? So PIP is a package management system written in Python and is used to install and manage software packages. So please, this is the most important command to install any packages along with Conda. Okay. So with the Conda keyword, it is uh, installing the package. Okay. So obviously it takes some time to install the packages so you can just uh, minimize it and continue working with your existing content okay so i'll minimize this so those who wants to refer the new packages please go to this link i will share this link okay and uh, installation link also anaconda So we save these links and you can use them later on. Okay. So you see that uh, is asking me to install. So open CV package is also getting installed. So now how to verify whether the package is installed or not so you can go to that uh, anaconda files pkgs folder what is the package I installed open cv right so you can see that is appearing here this is i installed just now right so some packages will be there some package will not be there so based on your requirement you can install them the panda is also one of the important uh, package which is already there in the anaconda okay So I will close this. So to exit that window, you can press exit keyword or you can close it directly. Okay. So continuing with the content. So last class, I think all of you are able to solve. Some of them asked me how to take the input, right? So I hope all of you explore that input function, right? At least basics of input function, how to read the input data. So basically, when you use input function, by default, it will read the data in which format? String format. So how will you convert that into integer format? You have to use the int float keyword before that input function. Okay. So for example, a equal to input, enter the number. Okay. Then I'll write print a. So how will you execute this code? Can anyone tell me what is the first thing? Once you write the code, press escape button. This color will change to blue. Press control enter. So when I press control enter, it is asking me to enter the number. I'll enter y. Okay. So you can see that it is the output is printing here. Got it? Suppose I want to check the 
type of that particular variable. What is the problem you are getting? What is the problem you are facing? What is the input that you entered? You entered six only. But what is the data type of that value? String. So this is an important problem that you need to be very careful. So by default, the data will be entered in string format. So to avoid that, what you need to do? You have to add int before reading the input. So you can see I've added int, opening bracket, input function, enter the number. Then I'll re-execute this code. So what is the class it is displaying now? Int, correct? Right? So that's why this is also, you can understand it as a typecasting basically. So in C, our typecasting process is a little bit difficult compared to the Python. So here you just need to add int. Uh, input just acts like a scanf function, right? Input will take the input from the user. By default, uh, it will be string data. So along with this, there are some operators which are new. See, some of the operators you have already learned in C, correct? Arithmetic operator, assignment operator, logical operators, right? Conditional operator. So there are some two new operators that that are there in Python along with the existing operators. That's why I, that's why I'm not going to cover the remaining operators. I want you to try them in Python by yourself. But what are the new operators that are there in the Python is exponential operator and floor division operator. So what is this going to do basically is for exponential operator you have to use two stars at the same time. So if I use pi here and four here, so what does it mean? Pi four correct so basically it is exponential operator similarly floor division operator so you know division operator right if i write five by three so it will display some uh, 1.5 something like that correct but floor division operator basically will remove that decimal value and it will just display the integer part whole number Right, so that is a new operator. So, what is a floor division operator? You need to use two slashes. So, in C, we have one front slash, in Python, we have two backslash, I mean, two front slash at the same time. So, that's why you are getting five power four. What is the output you are getting? 625. 20 by three, you are getting six. Two front slash, you are getting six, but only one front slash, you are getting 6.6. .6. So, this is one new additional of additional operator that is there in the Python. Similarly, this is a reminder operator, pi mod three. So it will give you the reminder. So five by three is, so three ones are, and what is the reminder you'll get? Two, okay? So these are all some of the operators you need to explore. So I'll just type here, your explore all existing operators, which are there in C. So they are all similar, only these two are addition. Okay, please remember that. So as I told you in the last class, import keyword will be used to import any new library. Just like hash include, import is a keyword. So here I'm importing sys sys, the system package, and I am trying to print the version of the Python, right? So what is my version 3.10.9 packaged by Anaconda, okay? So this is the current, uh, when, when it was installed, all these things it will display, okay? I mean, the reset version. So all these remaining topics, formatting, how to format outputs, all these things, you will see in the coming classes one by one, okay? So in today's class, if you have any doubt, please, uh, can you tell the difference between flow division? And... That's what, ma'am. Flow division will uh, remove this decimal part, this floating value, whereas the normal division will add that. Okay, so 20 divided by 3. Here I've used two slashes, right? So it is displaying only 6 as the answer. It is totally ignoring this fractional value, whereas 20 by 3 is displaying with the fractional value. That is the only difference. The class. So class is basically indicates the data types. Okay, so in, in Python, if you if you tell int int is a belong to one particular class okay float belongs to one particular class so like this we have n number of classes like dictionary list okay so which we are going to cover in the upcoming classes right so basically class indicates a particular function 
which you have studied in C, right? So all the data types in Python are considered as a class by default. So it is a very good question. Okay. So you can't call it as a data type. Each data type in turn is a, comes under a different class. Okay. Exponential operator. See, for example, I'll change the value at two bar four. So what is the output I'm getting? See, it goes line by line. This will print the whatever the value I entered. Three, I'm entering, so it is displaying three. Then two, the stars, what does it indicate? Two into, two into, two into two. So basically two multiplied by four times. Two twos are four, four twos are eight, eight twos are 16, okay? So it is called as exponential operator, like just like a power, power function. Any other doubt you have? while creating new notebook, it is showing permission deny. Okay, so all these problems, whatever you're facing, so please uh, uh, come with your laptop or uh, personally connect to me after the class, right? So we'll, uh, I'll help you. Any other doubts? So I hope uh, you got some idea why Jupyter Notebook is uh, important, what are the features, right? So you can save all your quotes at one place, we can reopen it, update it, so that you never miss out on any anything that you have practiced. That is the beauty of it. Uh, when can you meet in the college? So next uh, one week, you can meet me anytime. Okay, I'll be in the placement office. Okay, so I'll be uh, available. Just uh, text me before coming. Suppose if I'm outside, I will be uh, there to help you. Yeah, yeah. So, not C. Ah, CSE block. Can you see me the process? Nothing there. Just uh, click the install button. I will show you. Okay. So those uh, who wants to exit, they can exist. Those who have any doubts regarding installation, you can stay back. Okay, so we'll continue in the next class. So maybe in this week, we'll take one more session. Uh, I will update anytime. Okay, so please be active in the group. Uh, I'll be posting about the session details there. Okay, so in the coming classes, I'll be going a little bit uh, fast. So this is the first time uh, we are introducing uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I went a little bit slow in terms of installation and all. So we'll be covering a lot of topics in coming classes, which are very, very important. So please make sure that you are attending without missing the coming classes because most of the modal questions uh, in the upcoming class are based on the next sessions okay yeah recording is available i will share the link in the uh, uh, group okay An error occurred while creating. Okay, Rohit, we will see it. Okay, I have to check your files. Previous class I didn't record. Uh, in this class I've recorded. So you just uh, follow up from today's class. PIP and Conda are both are uh, package for uh, keywords used for installing the package. Suppose uh, you are installing Anaconda means Conda keyword is more suggested because it supports uh, the software that all the packages that, that can be installed in the Anaconda. Suppose if you are using any other platform or command prompt or Python idle shell, you can use PIP. So both are package installation keywords. Flow division operator, as I told you, it will just ignore the fractional value and it will print the uh, decimal part only. Any doubts? So I'll be there for next five minutes. So remaining students, you can exit. Uh, just practice uh, whatever I told you about Jupyter Notebook today. What is your doubt, Dheeraj? Okay, okay. 
So see, when you double click that installation package, you will get this prompt, click next button. I agree. You can install for just your all users, click next. Select the drive, click next. Here, it is asking, add anaconda to my path environment variable. Register anaconda as my default Python. So this you can select, okay? But this you need not to select because I already added anaconda to my path variable. See, it is also warning, not recommended. Why? Because this can lead to conflict with other application. Instead, use our command prompt and PowerShell menus added to the Windows Start menu. Okay. So if you already installed any other Python version, you should uncheck this particular button. That's all. Remaining all things are same. So after this, just install, click install button. It will take around five to 10 minutes to install it. Okay. Sometimes window command prompt use error that PIP not recognized. Ah, so obviously, an Ankit, uh, that command will only work in Anaconda prompt, not in window prompt. So please understand that. And before using PIP also, you have to install PIP. Are you getting my point? In Windows, if you want to install PIP, first you need to install, if you, if you want to use the PIP to install any packages, we need to install the PIP first. Okay, for example, how to install? I have never installed it separately. PIP. So you can check any platform. Okay. See ya. So to manually install, you need a copy of get pip.py. Okay. So all these things you need to do manually. So you need to type this command python get pip.py. Right. So that's why I'm telling you to avoid all these problems. The best thing is install Anaconda. Okay. So it comes with a notebook. It comes with the predefined packages. It comes with the pip. It comes with a conda. Right. So nobody uh, executes or nobody installs these packages separately in these days. So we have such kind of platforms uh, which will help us to simplify the things that we are doing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, guys? So just be active, ask the doubts like this, be interactive. If you need a break, you can tell me that also. So you can slow down or you can repeat or no problem. See the first impression or the best impression. That means once you start liking the Python, you will do it by yourself. Okay. So you need to get that first contact, right? Uh, that interest. Once you get that interest, definitely Python is very fun. Okay. So those uh, Rohit, I think some people are Rohit and those who are trying to install, uh, I can't tell you uh, what is the problem here by seeing the image. I need to check your laptop and uh, what you have done. Okay. Maybe uh, according to me, you are trying to create this file in some other drive where Anaconda is not installed. Okay. So make sure you are in that drive where Anaconda is installed. Cheyenne, flow division operator. Okay, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, see here.
So you know normal division operator, right, Shyam? So if you divide any number by other number, generally you will get the fractional value. So Python will provide you one more feature where you don't want to have this fractional value. You can ignore that. So that is called as floor. Okay. Floor means ignore the fractional values, just display the decimal value. Okay. So it will just delete that particular uh, uh, extra fractional data. That's the only thing that it, it is going to do. Reminder. Reminder I showed you, right? Yeah, what were you doing? So 10 mod 3. You have to use mod value. So what is 10 mod 3? 1. Correct? Percentage uh, operator you need to use. Okay. Okay, guys. So there are some uh, inbuilt function. Yes, yes. Kaushik, uh, I already told you can exit, but I'm just there here to clarify the doubts. Okay, I'm not going to teach any new topic. So don't worry. Okay, guys. So we can uh, wind up today's session. So please uh, be active in the upcoming classes also. Don't just don't lose the focus. Don't lose the interest. Be excited every class. Come up with the same mindset so that we can. Yeah. Uh, packages. Can you just what do you mean by this? I'm very weak in understanding. I can talk Telugu, but it's very difficult to read. Packages are the huge chess sir. What do you mean by that? Psychiran, you need not to worry if you don't have a laptop. Time being, you use Moodle programs, execute, learn, use online compiler. Okay. So don't worry about Jupyter Notebook, time being. But remember that this is important. Once you have your own laptop, make sure you install it and run it. Packages. As I told you, to draw the graph, as I told you here in the prayer, here. You can't draw the graph, this graph, without help of matplotlib package. It is just like that. Can you run a C program without stdio.h? Without input function? Impossible, right? So packages are inbuilt library files. It will hold the inbuilt library files, which you can access and do a lot of operations. It is like in, in our college, it is like our, our canteen is one package, our library is one package, our stadium is one package. Got it? Where our college is like Anaconda, individual features are like packages. You can think like that. Yeah, yeah. So there are uh, operators, seal, floor. I want you to try this. So explore how to use seal function. So all these are, as I'm telling, this kind of doubt you get now. Immediately you have to explore that. So now you know 3.3, I don't want, uh, I want to convert it into, instead of 3.3, I want to seal it to the 4. So how will you do it? So there is seal function available in Python. So just explore that. Seal is also one of the inbuilt function, inbuilt package. Okay, so seal in Python. So content is available. All that you need to do is explore the whatever doubts you are getting. See, to use the seal function, you need to use the math library. Import math, math.seal. Got it? So you can't use it directly. For that, you need math library. Import math. Print math.seal. 5.6. So you can see that 5.6 is rounded off to the next digit. So this is the importance of uh, packages. So this math package, just like math.hnc. So all these things you need to explore whenever you get out.
okay guys so i think i'm also getting late we'll see you in the next session any doubt uh, regarding installation please meet me tomorrow okay before coming just text me don't directly you know rush up into the placement office okay see you see you tomorrow